Hello and welcome back to another Jamesy Tech YouTube video. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to go ahead and configure point to point OSPF on Packet Tracer to prepare you for your CCNA exam. So if you guys want to learn how to configure your point to point OSPF, make sure to watch this video to the end, hit that like button and subscribe because I'm going to upload more of these Packet Tracer videos over time. So if you guys are studying for the CCNA or just want to see more of these videos, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe for more. If you guys want to link to this Packet Tracer or download this Packet Tracer, go ahead and go down below into the uh, description. I'm going to have my website. You can download it straight from there. Along with that, if you need any help with the Packet Tracer, you can either leave, or leave a comment or join our Discord in the uh, description below as well. I'm trying to develop a Discord of people who are either studying for the CCNA or other certification exams to help each other out, bounce some ideas, you know, just to create a nice community to uh, support these videos and things like that. So yeah, let's get right into it. I'm not going to explain too much about OSPF, but I'm going to uh, say it's a dynamic routing protocol. I'm going to show you guys why we do need it, though, and what happens if we don't implement some sort of routing protocol. But OSPF essentially is a way of routers to advertise networks that are uh, that it currently is hosting to other routers so that the routers can take the uh, packets from the computers and reach the other networks. If that sounds confusing, I'm going to show you guys here in a second. So we are here in Packet Tracer. We have three, uh, actually four different, yeah four different networks one two three four um, we have two point to point networks which is going to be here and here and then we have uh these other small small uh land networks that we're going to go ahead and show you guys so pretty much um let's let's say i'm on pc0 which is a 192.168.1 network and we want to ping over to pc2 over on the right side so we're going to do ip config make sure we have our ip address there we go. So now let's try to ping 192.168.2.2. It's gonna say destination host unreachable. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys why that is. Let's go to simulation mode. If you guys don't know about this mode, it's pretty useful. If you're learning, obviously in practice, you're not gonna have this. So uh, use this very lightly. If you're learning new concepts, it's a good idea. So let's go ahead and try to ping once more. So we're gonna see the packet start on PC0. It's going to forward it up to the router. But since the router doesn't know where to go, it's going to drop the packet and send it back saying, I don't know where to go. But essentially what we're going to do is have uh, the router over on the dot two network is going to advertise, hey, this is my uh, network over here to router one. And then that's going to forward it to router zero. That's essentially how OSPF is going to work. So let's hop on router zero and get this going. All right, we're going to do enable comp T. No security on these routers. I'm, I just uh, made a simple IP address, so you don't have to add the IP addresses, things like that. This is just a bare bones network. All right, so now we're going to do uh, 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 router OSPF1. Now you may be asking what that one is. It's pretty much the process ID. We're, gonna get, we're not going to get too deep into that. Um, the process ID doesn't completely matter for our scenario right here, but as you have bigger and bigger networks and you're doing like multi, uh, uh, multi-area OSPF it can get more important we're not going to cover multi-area OSPF in here uh, let's go ahead and hop over here so now we're in the uh, OSPF mode let's go ahead and do a question mark we have all kind of parameters here we're focused on the network parameter but we have this uh, command network question mark or question mark it's gonna ask for a network number. How do you know what networks to advertise? So let's go ahead and do this really cool command that I like, do show IP route, which is essentially gonna um, give you the list of networks that it, the router is currently hosting. So on G or S000, it is hosting the 10.20.30.0 network. And on G00, it is hosting the uh, 192.168.1.0 network. So when we're configuring OSPF, using this command is very useful unless you use the other method, which I'm going to show you guys in a little bit. So let's go ahead and get this rolling. Let's go ahead and do network. What you really want to be focusing on, and I'm going to really emphasize this, is the C. Do not use the local. I mean, I'm not sure if you can, but uh, I've always done it with using the uh, C, which is the directly connected network. So we're going to be advertising this network here. So let's go ahead and type... 10.20.30.0 let's do a question mark see what's next now that's new for some people that is new ospf wildcard bits so if you don't know what a wildcard is essentially it is the flipped version of the subnet mask so if let's say you have 255 255 255 255 which is a slash 32 if you flip that it's going to be all zeros zero 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 
So what I do to figure out the wild card mass, let's so let's say um so the two five fives are pretty easy because if you flip that, it's a zero. So we're gonna do zero dot zero dot zero dot. Um now the next number, we have a dot thirty address, which is gonna be a dot two five two for the subnet mask. My best way of doing this is just taking two five five and then subtracting whatever the uh, last uh, octet is. So this is gonna be two five two. Two five five minus two five two is three. So we're gonna put a three at the end because that is the wild card mask. Essentially, it's just like I said, the flip version uh, of the subnet mask. Let's go ahead and do a question mark. Then we got go ahead and do area zero. So zero, the area is pretty much we're not gonna get really into it but we're doing single area so it's always going to be area zero for this scenario so there we go that is one of the routes that we've advertised or that we're going to be advertising the next one we're going to do is the uh directly connected network right here so now let's do an up arrow since we don't have to type that again uh let's go on backspace so now let's do 192.168.1.0 space 0.0.0.255 once again, 255.255.255.0. If you flip that, 000255. Hopefully this is making sense. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll try to help you guys out. Go ahead and enter. So that is one of the networks. Let's go ahead and hop over on router one. Enable conf T, uh, router OSPF one. So now let's do do show IP route. So now we have a both of the 10 networks. So as you can see here, we have uh, 10.20.30.0, 10.20.30.4. That's essentially just the next, next network of this one over here. Oops, let's go ahead and go back over here. So now let's go ahead and, and uh, advertise these networks. We're gonna do network 10.20.30.0. And once again, this is the slash 30 subnet. So we're gonna do 0 .0 0.0.0.3, area zero, boom. That should go ahead. And once you do this, you should be seeing, um, which is, this is saying that it's going from the loading to full state, which is the OSPF uh, modes. I'm not gonna get into that, but you can look up the uh, OSPF uh, states. Um, essentially that means that it is doing OSPF actively. So now let's do the other network. So now all we gotta do is up arrow and delete the zero, replace it with a four because we are doing this guy down here. Enter, so that is, that is that. So now you may be wondering, uh, what is the other method? So now let's go over to router two. This is where we're going to do the other way of configuring OSPF, which in my opinion, it's a lot easier. Um, it's a lot faster at least. So now let's go and do enable conf T. Uh, we're going to do a do show IP route. So instead of advertising it with the like IP address and the wildcard mask, what we can actually do is go to the port number. So let's do int S000. Let's do IP OSPF question mark. So as you can see, we have the process ID over here. Let's type the process ID of one and question mark. It's going to be area zero. So you can go to each interface and just do IP OSPF one area zero. However, you don't want to just do that when you're practicing because the CCNA will have both on the test. So you should know how to do both. So IP OSPF one and area zero. Essentially, that's the same exact command uh, as the ones we were doing earlier. It's just in one simple command on the interface. One cool thing as well is via, let's say you have three interfaces that need to uh, all be advertised. You could do a, a in interfa <clears throat> interface range with those three, do this one command and it advertises all of them. So that's why this is a way easier way to do it. So go ahead and press enter. Now we can do int G00 to advertise this network right here. So now we're gonna go ahead and do IP OSPF1 area zero. So that should go ahead and go to full. All right. So now uh, let's go to router one just to show you guys how it looks once it's configured. Do show IP route. As you can see, we have instead of CLCL, we have two O's at the bottom, which stands for OSPF. So we have um, it's showing you essentially it is showing the network over here and the network over here. Uh, these two networks right there. Pretty much what it's saying is it's saying, oh, I know how to get to these networks now that they've been advertised to me. This is how you head. This is how you head over to them, because you can you'll see uh, you'll see that we have S00 and S001. It tells you how to get to that network and it forwards it to the next router, which then that router will have it in its uh, tables and say, hey, it's over here. So that's essentially um, how that works. 
I believe on the other ones. Let's see. Let's do a do show IP route. Oops. Yeah, you'll also have two O's advertising the other networks. So essentially, that's your easy way of knowing uh, if it's working or not. Another command you can use is, uh, let's see, show IP OSPF int, I believe. Yes. You can see this obviously has a lot more uh, to the command or a lot more to uh, display. It tells you the adjacent router, tells you all kinds of stuff. The network type, we're, we're doing just point to point. I might do multi-access in another uh, video, but I didn't want to cram it all into one to uh, blow your guys' mind. So just left it to um, these uh, networks. So uh, another one we can do is uh, show IP OSPF neighbor, which this one's a, a way better way to look at it. Um, it'll just tell you the uh, neighboring router, which will uh, be router one. And it'll tell you what state it's in. So let's do this on router one just to get a better picture. Do show IP OSPF neighbor. Yep, as you can see, it's showing the other two routers that it is um, neighboring. So now that we've done this, we can actually go from PC1 all the way over to PC2 or wherever you want, essentially, uh, on this network. So let's go ahead and go over to PC0. So now that we tried to ping it earlier and it didn't work, let's try to ping it now. Might time out a couple times because uh, I believe I'm not sure how that completely works or why it times out first. As you can see, we are now getting pings to uh, PC0 to PC2. Let's go ahead and look on it. Look at it on simulation mode. I do like simulation mode because it tells you how to like shows the visualization of what is happening. And you can also open up the individual packets, see what's happening. That's pretty cool stuff um, just for my nerds out there. So it's going to router zero. And then since uh, these routers are advertising all their networks, we can go all the way there and back. The reason why it might have timed out first is it's probably trying to find where it's going. That might be why, but uh, don't quote me on that. That's just my guess. All right, so let's try, since we pinged that network, let's go ahead and try to ping, let's say 10.20.30.2 because that is a different network, but it is a closer uh, network logically. Yep, we're able to ping there. And let's try to go from 30 or 30.5, uh, how about that? Yep, we can ping all there. So that's pretty much how you configure multi-area, or sorry, not multi-area, point-to-point -point OSPF on Packet Tracer. Hopefully I kept this video short and sweet. I want to keep them around 10 minutes or under. So if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Like, like I said, comment down below with any questions if you guys have any. Um, once again, this is posted on my website. So if you wanted to follow along with me, you can just download it straight from the website and follow along. Uh, yeah, guys, thank you guys for watching. This is James E. Tech, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.